guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Techno Buffalo, and this is an overview for you of the HTC Desire. This is one of HTC's newest Android devices. Back at Mobile World Congress, they announced this device along with the HTC Legend and the HD Mini. And of those three devices, the Desire, this one right here, is absolutely the most powerful device that HTC has ever released that runs the Android platform. On the inside, it's very much like a Google Nexus One, but actually a little bit better. It's got the Qualcomm 1 GHz Snapdragon processor, and it has a tremendous 576 megabytes of RAM compared to the Nexus One, which has 512 megabytes of RAM. That's still a lot. So let's talk about the hardware on the HTC Desire. Then we're going to get into the web browsing, and we're going to talk about the Sense interface, really everything else. So the screen is 3.7 inches diagonal as a comparison uh, to the iPhone that is 0.2 inches bigger. Also, the screen is much higher resolution. So we have 800 down and 480 across, whereas the iPhone is 480 down and 320 across, which means on the desire, icons are super crisp, text is super crisp, photos look fantastic, and video comes through very, very nicely. Compared to a device like the HD2, well, then the desire doesn't look so impressive anymore. Uh, the, the HD2 has a 4.3 inch screen, but it has the same resolution, 800 down and 480 across. Now, the screen on the desire uses AMOLED technology like the Nexus One, which means that blacks are ultra black and power consumption is improved. So let's take a look around the device. New to this device, uh, compared to the Nexus One, is that it has a slight chin. And the benefit of the chin is that it raises the optical D-pad slightly towards the user, so that's very, very comfortable to hold in one hand and to navigate like so. On the Nexus One, if you remember, there is a D-pad, but it's mechanical, and it's placed a little bit further below the row of buttons um, down towards here. Those mechanical D-pads aren't as nice as the optical D-pads, they're not as precise, they can get covered with dust and move slower and, and those sorts of things. On the side, we have a volume rocker. On the top, there's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the standby button. Nothing on this side. On the back, we have a 5 megapixel camera like the Nexus One, and we have a single LED flash with a speaker, large HTC branding. We have this nice rubbery coating on the back, so it feels really secure in the hand. It's also a bit thicker than the Nexus One by a fraction of a millimeter, although it, after, after, but after having used both devices, I can say that the Desire feels significantly thicker, but I really don't mind because it makes the device feel more sturdy in hand for some reason. Okay, so let's turn on the device and talk about the Sense UI experience. All right, so I'm going to unlock the device and look at this really cool background animation. This is Android 2.1, which means that it supports live wallpaper. So I'm going to go over to a blank screen, and you can see the really awesome looking live wallpaper, and I'm going to change the wallpaper to something else. So I'm going to go to live wallpaper. And this particular one you just saw is HTC's own live wallpaper. But of course we have the other ones that come from the Google Nexus One, so we can choose the Nexus wallpaper, which is quite cool. Anywhere you tap, you'll see kind of a ray of light with lots of colors coming from there. So we'll leave that on for now. Let's talk about the Sense interface. So the Sense interface is comprised of seven home screens onto which you can put a ton of awesome widgets. And thanks to the really fast processor and the large amount of RAM, these widgets perform very, very well, the best we've seen yet. Now, a problem with having seven home screens, and I'm gonna go through these in a second, is how do you get from the one all the way on the left to the one all the way on the right? Well, this was a problem in previous devices from HTC, but now they have this pinch feature where you pinch your, f your fingers and you get a zoomed out view of all of your different home screens. You can quickly jump around. So I can go to the weather, I can go to the one all the way on the right, or the one all the way on the left. It's a very, very smart way uh, that HTC has implemented to get around your home screens. Furthermore, you can get to that zoomed out view uh, by tapping on the home screen button when you're on the home screen. Okay, so let me show you how I have my home screens laid out. Then I'm going to show you some other configurations that you can have. So right here, I've got the clock and the time, of course, and the, uh, the weather. So if I tap on the clock, I'm taken to this beautiful HTC Sense interface where I can change the alarm, where I can use the stopwatch, so on and so forth. I get to see my weather. I can quick dial somebody that I call on a regular basis. I can go right into settings. I've got my mail here, calendar, internet, things like that. If I go over to the left, I've got Twitter. Um, so I can, in an instant, type what I'm doing. 
and go into Opera Mini, got the XDA application here. I've got a link to Peep, which is the full HTC Twitter application, which works quite well. And I also have a shortcut to a website. Uh, over here on the left, I have the weather. And all the way on the left, I haven't put anything here yet. So I'm going to go back to the center. To the right, I have a list of my favorite people with beautiful pictures. To the right of that, I have the text messaging carousel, so I can flick through my text messages like so. And on the right, I have nothing. Now, I'm going to change my scene. And scenes are from HTC that allow you to have different widget configurations. So let's say you want one scene for the weekend, one scene for the workday, one scene when you're traveling. So let's go into scenes, and I'm going to go to social. And I, I don't want to save my scene. And so we get a totally different widget configuration. We have this big clock here. Over on the left, we have an email. Over on the left, we have a friend stream, which will actually pull from a multitude of social networks. Right now, I have it pulling from just Twitter. We have a nice calendar here, which integrates with HTC's uh, calendar application that's a lot nicer than what you get with just standard Android. Going over to the right, we have a different way of looking at the favorites. If you remember on the previous screen, I had favorites arranged in a 2 by 3 grid, and now it's a 1 by 3 grid. And then I also have a quick toggle for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and the camera. Um, there's the text messaging again. Nothing is over there. So let's jump to another scene. Let's go to travel this time. Okay, so here I have two different clocks. And you can see the background just changed. These clocks let me see the time in two different areas. And here's email again. This is HTC's footprints, which allows you to tag coordinates to a picture, and you can add more information about a particular place that you've been. So this is assuming that you're traveling. It's also going to load the weather. And you can flick between multiple areas for the weather. Quite nice. Over here on the right, I have a music player right on the home screen, friend stream, so I can update my status to multiple places at one time, the calendar, and then there's nothing over there. Let's jump to another scene. This time we're going to go to work. Let's see what HTC thinks we should look at for our work scene. So the background's probably going to change. And it did. So here we have calendar right out in front so you know where you need to be. To the left we have email. To the left of that we have stocks and calendar. Let's go back to the middle. Here's the same looking thing. We get a quick view of the weather. And of course, tapping on that will bring you into HTC's weather application. To the right of that, we have news, and we can subscribe to, say, BBC News. And very fast, it's going to load news headlines. You can scroll through very elegantly. And to the right, there is nothing. Let's go to the one, one more scene just to make sure we have all the different um, widgets. Go to play. And here's play. We get a similar looking clock to what we had before. We can set a new photo album. So I'm going to go to all photos here. And now, that is Buzz Killington. <laughs> now I can flick through, and I can see all of my pictures right on my home screen. Very handy if you've just been somewhere, you want to show your friends where you've been. You can tap on a picture, and it will zoom in. And you get this beautiful photo display. We can go into landscape. And this is your photo gallery, and you can tap on a particular photo to make it bigger. And of course, you have really fantastic multi-touch to zoom in on the image. Let's see what else we have here. The friend stream once again makes an appearance, and weather is back again. And over here on the right, we have a different look to the music widget. What happens is that when you add these widgets, you can choose a variety of different um, layouts. And here's the bookmarks widget. You haven't yet seen that. So if I tap and hold, and I go to widget, Anyone that you see designated with the HTC lettering means it's one that HTC has made, uh, and, and, and it's better than the Android counterpart that exists on these devices. So if I go to, say, uh, Music, HTC, I get a, two different choices of how I want the widget to look. I can go for the small widget or for the larger widget. I'm going to choose the larger widget. 
And here it is right on the home screen. And of course, I can delete it. So in terms of widgets, in terms of performance of the home screens, HTC has nailed it. I find myself staying on the home screens and not actually having to dig into any applications because these widgets are so powerful that they are applications themselves. And thanks to the really fast processor and the huge amount of RAM, the operation is super smooth. Whereas on some earlier devices that had these widgets like the HTC Hero, performance wasn't as good. Okay, so let's take a look at the internet, the, the web browser. So I'm going to go to Techno Buffalo. And so here I go. And by the way, uh, the screen on this device seems to be more solid than it is on the Nexus One kind of like the iPhone, so typing on it just feels more solid. Okay, so here it is, it's already coming up. We can go into uh, landscape, and I'm gonna zoom in here. Internet performance is really fantastic on the HTC Desire. Let's go to Engadget, and we have the other, other kind of keyboard here. I should learn how to spell. All right, let's see how fast that comes up. And we've got the mobile view here, so let's find classic. Here it is, full Engadget experience. Okay, so I'm going to pan around here. Very smooth. I don't see any checkerboards. To zoom in, of course, I can double tap. Reflows the column, or I can pinch. Very precise zoom control. Let's see how fast this web browser is compared to the iPhone. Okay, so here we go. We've got the iPhone 3GS here on the right and the HTC Desire on the left. Let's go to a website. Let's go to pocketnow.com and we'll bring it up there. And I'll have to type the whole thing, it looks like. But there it goes. So I'm going to tap them at the same time if possible. One, two, three. They're both on the same Wi Fi network. And they're off. Very, very close. Oh, it looks like the Desire won by half of a second. That was very impressive. Well, actually, it seems to be loading more stuff now. Okay, so let's move around on the page and click on a permalink. So let's go to here. And this, I have to say that the multi-touch is more smooth on the iPhone, um, but the Desire is definitely capable. And something I want you to notice is the difference in screen clarity. So if you look at these two images here, it looks so much more lifelike on the AMOLED display compared to the iPhone. If you can see that, the iPhone just kind of seems washed out. So I'm going to tap on these headlines at the same time, and hopefully they will load. Okay, and they're off. Okay, the Desire beat the iPhone 3GS again. Um, sort of, yep, there it goes, it's done. And we'll wait till the 3GS finishes loading. Okay, and let's do a screen rotation speed test. So we are going to zoom out a little bit here. And let's see which one rotates faster. Okay, it looks like the Desire was faster because it doesn't have that screen animation that the iPhone does. Let's try it again. Okay, the Desire was faster again. Overall, it looks like the Desire is a slightly faster web browsing machine compared to the iPhone 3GS, which is extremely impressive. The iPhone 3GS beats almost every device out there, whether it's running Android or Windows Mobile, WebOS, or even BlackBerry. So overall, the HTC Desire is a killer device. It's like the Nexus One, but in my opinion, better because you have this gorgeous Sense interface you have more RAM, and the hardware is different. So we have this optical D-pad. We have a screen that just feels more secure. Uh, and let me give you a quick example of typing. So I'm just going to launch into um, a, a word processing application really quick. OK, here we are. It's just an email. So I find that I'm much faster in typing with the HTC Desire than I am with the iPhone or that I was with the Nexus One when I had it. So let's see here. I'm going to say. This is a test of the keyboard on the Desire. And I'm not even looking. And look how fast. Very, very fast. Probably one of the best on-screen keyboards that I've ever used on any smartphone. And that's saying something. I've used a lot of uh, keyboards. And 
There's just something about the desire. HTC has got it right with this device. So if you have the opportunity to import this from Europe, I'd say give it a try. This device is awesome. Unfortunately, it's not going to come to the U.S. as far as we know. It's in the U.S. sort of as the Nexus One, but the Nexus One really isn't as good as the Desire. So that's it for the look at the HTC Desire. That's it for now.